everything. As a DVBE, you are automatically certified by the California Public Utilities Commission because that is a state agency. DGS does their certification, and for those who have gone through the process, you have been vetted. So you are now ready to market to any CPUC agency. And there are, I don't even know, do you know how many are? I don't know. I'll, I'll take a guess, 50 or 60. Let's just say. So there are 50 or 60 agencies who recognize your DVBE, and they are not meeting their DVBE goals for the most part. So that is not your sales point, but that is your door opener. It gives you an opportunity to present your business. So now you have to do everything we're going to spend the next 20 minutes on. Okay? Any questions so far through the first part of the business, the corporate, the uh, certification arms? Any questions there? Yes, sir. Nice and loud, please. Sure. Will we have our matchmaking uh, opportunity? Should the three C one P's be part of our elevator pitch? Absolutely. We're going to talk about that here right now. We're going to spend the rest of the time on that. It's a good question. It's almost like a leading question, isn't it? Let's see what the next slide is. Come on. Did everybody understand the importance of networking? Okay. Networking is to do what? This is really, really important here. Networking is to do what? Everybody should say this, build relationships, right? Because if you try and sell somebody during a networking event, what's going to happen? Yeah, you're probably, what, I'm going to get some of this You know what I do? I take whatever they gave me and it goes right down there. I'm not really interested because I don't even know who they are. What I want to do is build a relationship with them and get permission to continue to talk to them. So I will always ask them, can I get 10 to 15 minutes of your time sometime next week at your convenience? Or something to that effect. And I want to keep building that relationship. That is critical. You've got to build the relationship. That's the purpose of networking. We ask you to bring a capability statement because as you'll see, at some point in time during a matchmaking event, you're going to want to show them your capability statement. But I would never just throw it on the table unless they ask for it. Don't ever throw it on the table until they ask for it. Okay? It's sort of your trump card. You want to keep building that relationship. Because if you're meeting with an agency, what have you learned today that you've already done? Well, yeah, besides showing up, that's good. Yeah, show up, certainly. What else have you done prior to showing up? We all learned this in the military. What do you do? Say it. You prepare. you prepare for it. That means you better have gone on the website. You better have pulled the annual plan. You better know what their forecasts are, what they're going to be buying in the future. Because if you can say that to them, guess what you just did? You just... You just presented a solution to something that they, they know they're going to need in the future or that they already have a need for. That is huge. So the more research that you've done prior to your actual face-to-face -face or meeting about who they are and what they're going to be buying, the better off you're going to be. So that's why it's so important to have that relationship. So I've gotten, as you know, many of you know, our company is designed around being really an interface for you. We're, we're out there all the time. We're at conferences. We're talking to the supplier universities. We're talking to the small business specialists. We're talking to the contracting specialists at all the bases. We're talking to the PEOs and the PCOs. And we're also talking to the program managers. And one of the things that happens there is they will let us know what's out, what's coming out that they're going to be buying. And that's what you need to do. That is the single greatest advantage that you can have. And you, you can't do anything you know, outside of that, but you can certainly, by knowing it's coming, guess what you get to do? Prepare for it, right? You get to prepare for it. So that's why when you see things coming out in, in a year from now, you can begin building your subcontract teams. You can begin, begin filling in your gaps. If you do a gap analysis, for example, and what you're missing on a requirement that's coming out, okay? So 
was huge. That pre-forecast, that pre-market research before you meet a specialist is going to be the difference between night and day. If I can wow a Karen home, I'm going to get the chance to talk to her again. And that's really what I need to do. I really need to be continuing to, to talk to her, build my relationship, and then be able to then eventually market my, my companies in front of her, okay? Same thing would relate to all of you. That is critical. So it's all based on the relationship. All right, let's dive into this thing. Capability. What do you think capability is? That's good. This is good. Ability to perform. Okay, so it's an ability to perform. You're really saying that we have the ability to be able to do what you need done without telling you we do this, 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 this. Right? What you're doing is you are describing in a one to two sentence business description your core competencies. And in a nutshell, you are driving your core competencies as the door opener as a, to, the, to being a solution provider to that entity, whatever it is, right? That's your capability. And capability goes so far as to, to really see that you've done a gap analysis on your own company. Now, the greatest single realization that we can all have is to understand that we can't do everything. Sometimes that's hard. It's hard to hear that, right? But we have to realize that. And if we're effective in realizing that, and we can fill the gaps, and we can fill them prior to meeting with the people we're going to meet with, then we now have, they, they gain, we gain additional respect from that, okay? So a capability statement is not only the basic core competencies, but it's all the ability to fill in the gaps that you have. Yes, sir? Uh, is it necessary to follow the format that is uh, available to the government? Good question. So, format. You know, there really is no prescribed format other than making sure that you have these critical elements on there. Okay? And we, we actually have some that where we create with pictures on them, showing a before and an after if it's relevant. If you're in construction, that's a great, a great picture. Uh, we also show the core competencies where we actually list the services that we perform, okay? And that we have, and then we're going to prove it in our past performance. So the format is basically your creativity, but it needs to be it needs to flow. And I'm recommending to you that it flows in this order. Capability, capacity. Now the capacity is your ability to grow with a requirement. Your ability to fund the requirement. Your ability to bond for the requirement. Your ability to be able to pull together a team for the requirement. Okay? So the cap capacity is your ability to grow to the requirement. In other words, you've already thought about it and it's, and it's part of your business plan. How we're going to be able to grow to that job, grow to that scope of work. So the, cap the capability is the ability to perform, the capacity is the ability to grow with the job. So one of the greatest things that I've also learned from at and but also with some of the others that are here, SoCal Gas, Horizon, Southern California Edison, is that every one of them wants to see that you are financially sound. And that is a critical element of your capacity. Your financial uh, books need to be in order. As a matter of fact, I'm hopeful we're going to go through a, an accounting process where we're going to have our books analyzed. And we're going to, they're going to see that the, the financial capacity to do what we say we can do is present in the, the national team that we have. Okay? So for all of you, that's going to relate as well. So be sure that your financial house is in order. Because 
And as you remember going through certifications, every one of them asked for your books, right? They wanted your P&Ls, they wanted your taxes, they wanted everything, right? So it's got to be in order. So just remember that. The next one is one of my favorite, and that's called your credibility. Your credibility is what other people say about your business. How did you perform on a similar scope of work for another large entity? So if you can get a buyer from SoCal Gas, if, you're, if SoCal Gas is one of your customers, that will tell you how good you did on the job, that is a great thing to put on. They'll put their name on it, and then away you go. And that's, that, that is the single greatest door opener. Now, everything that we're doing should also be documented on your website and in greater depth and detail. Because the capability statement is typically how many pages? One page, right? One page capability statement is, is the very best thing that you can do. Now you can back it up with a document called a statement of qualifications, which is a larger document stating all of your 3C1P. But you can list multiple past performances, multiple pictures of jobs, etc. etc. Okay? One well, let me get to this next one, we'll come back to you. The next one is what everybody looks at. We put it forth because if you don't have the first three, this one is really irrelevant. And it's called past performance. Now, I've never done business with a VA. So how am I going to work with, with the federal government? I've never done business with SoCal Gas. How am I going to do business with them? Or another utility? I've never done business with a large telecommunications company. How am I going to do business with them? The thing that they're going to want to see if you have never had a like experience in that sector is a like experience somewhere else. And it needs to be as closely parallel to the requirement that you're going after. Does that make sense? So you want that like experience to be very, very identified to the requirements that you've already done your homework on, and you know they're out there, that you are going after and you're pursuing. Okay? Because the important thing is here is that we all understand, and they understand as well, that not everybody has done business you know, with a large utility, with a large telecommunications company, with the federal government, with the state government. But if you've done like jobs in the commercial sector, private sector, and you can document that through the credibility part, through the capacity part, and through the capability part, then you're at least going to get consideration to go to the next step, at which time you will demonstrate your technical expertise, right? Because there's no point in starting off with your technical expertise if you haven't really raised the bar on the conversation. Does that make sense now? Because, for example, you're in a matchmaking event. Very few of these people are going to know the intricacies of your business or of your line of work. Some of them may have a little bit of understanding, but by and large, they don't know exactly your business and all the technical things. So they're, what they're doing is they are looking at you to see if you have met the 3C1P formula before they're even going to get you in front of anybody else. And that is a very, very important distinction. Okay, you have another question? I uh, made the website that we have conform to the uh, capability statement. And it came to mind, uh, shouldn't there be a spot in there for testimonial? For example, I had a, another construction cleanup company hire us for a job that they couldn't do. Everybody would answer? Yes. yes, most certainly. You definitely want testimonials. That's that credibility side of it, remember? 